Hello, hello there and welcome back to War Thunder. Today I want to present you the Moto Canoniere Convertibili MC591 type Saeta P494. Now if you think you, to yourself, oh it's an Evo Forces video, ah, just just leave me alone, it's boring content. No, not, not that thing. Because there is the gameplay footage and the first thing that you see is the actual first battle that I played in this thing. The next thing is the description of what it is, what makes it so special, and then also a huge discussion what this ship means uh, for the future of naval forces. Now it doesn't really look like it's being that outstanding, it looks a bit like a German Jaguar with two 40mm uh, cannons, the ones in question are the 40mm-70 uh, Breda Bofors Type 107 auto cannons with 4000 rounds of ammunition. They are absolutely fantastic, they have very good gun handling, you know, rotation speed, firing angles, rate of fire, uh, they take very long to overheat, um, at some point they really lack the accuracy, but the first bursts are really accurate. Uh, we have two ammunition types, the stock 40mm HEIT is really great, 1000 meters per second mass velocity, 184 grams of TNT equivalent bursting charge and 5 millimeters of penetration. And there is no armor piercing in this belt, it's pure HE. This even will damage uh, bigger ships like crazy. But the most outstanding shell type is a tier 2 modification and that is the 40mm HE PFF. Now it is stated as a high explosive with variable time fuse, um, aka a proximity fuse shell. And we know from tanks etc that 40mm proximity fuse shells are not really that crazy uh, versus aircraft. But as you can see, they have a strange symbol. It's like an armor piercing belt, but it's also an HE belt. So it's 157.2 grams of TNT equivalent bursting charge with a slightly faster muscle velocity of 1025 meters per second and also uh, five millimeters of penetration. And so the trigger radius is seven meters. You have radar on this ship, but that's not all. So that is what I'm using. You can shred destroyers, patrol boats, uh, planes with it. Um, it's so crazy. But the long range capabilities are a bit limited compared to naval guns, you know, four inch, five inch and upwards. And for that, you have the five Netuno 8.1 inch uh, missiles. Now, the uh, information available is a bit limited. The maximum speed is 280 meters per second. I think the range is 10 kilometers. So it's roughly four seconds per uh, kilometer that you need to take into account for travel time. But the TNT equivalent bursting charge is a mighty 25.28 kilograms. That is like hitting somebody with an 11 inch shell in terms of the TNT bursting charge and that is quite strong so with those things in combination you can already see what this is causing uh, you shred the patrol boats you can go in for the cap you can hunt down even destroyers if you uh, know where to aim for their ammo racks and you know this is the very first game that I played with it now the ship has no armor whatsoever it is really fragile it cannot really take hits that it survived for that long was actually pretty surprising and that was not even with the expert qualification. After this battle I decided to put a talisman on the ship despite it being only a 30 days test drive and also give it the expert qualification because with this thing I will grind the Italian tech tree. Now the ship also costs you 270,000 RP to get, 690,000 civil lines to purchase and 13,000 civil line repair cost. But it is absolutely worth it. So the ship is also quite fast with 74 kilometers per hour. It's quite maneuverable. It's a good weapon platform. And did you see that missile kill on a Moskva? That's beautiful. That's just the beauty. And that is also uh, giving me the introduction to the next topic. And that is how to use the missiles and what the missiles mean for the future 
of naval forces. So first of all, you can uh, give somebody the full broadside, you know, uh, you can pump uh, one of those rockets into a destroyer um, when it comes around the corner in very close quarters engagements. You can then shred its guns with your 40 millimeters and just uh, shred him completely. Um, you also can hunt enemy patrol boats that think that they are safe, you know, just like this PG uh pgh2 and uh i think you can also use them versus aircraft although i never had the pleasure of making that actually work and there you could see that is the end result screen of my first battle let's have a quick look at the post battle results before we continue with the discussion so that is for 15 kills having survived the battle and getting the um the awards the appropriate we get up to 82,000 civil lines and 6,400 RP without a talisman because this was the first battle without a booster but with a premium account. So those were some epic awards and you know look at this almost 20,000 ship damage. That is crazy. Now another thing is let's have a look at what this means for this and this is another uh, part that I want to specifically point out. I open fire and then uh, I don't know what quite what happened but I aimed a bit lower a bit lower and suddenly the ammunition blows up. I have no idea how it blew up when aiming so high. Now funnily enough if then I try to do the same with a Fletcher and specifically go for the ammo rack even with uh, using here the missiles it doesn't really work and I have no idea why. Also you can see how inaccurate the guns get when they are close to overheat so the dispersion gets quite insane. Now after the second uh, missile I switch to the back end of the ship, knock out the back three turrets um, to increase my survivability and then yeah that was a crew knockout and I also got destroyed. But those were two those were two destroyers in, in a close quarter engagement. Now this is how you optimally do it. Uh, you shoot one missile and that's it. So you don't really draw attention. Also funnily enough you can track your own missiles with the radar to see how, fa how fast they go towards the target. And you know at some point also they stop rendering. Perfect, perfect ammunition blow up. Now here I should have aimed a bit uh, more carefully, but that guy was way was aware of me, so I had to actually reverse into cover. So another thing is here this scene. Um, it doesn't really work from all angles. Bow in ships are not really that good. But what do missiles mean for the future of War Thunder? Now let's just summarize here only the missiles. You are limited to five. They are relatively slow with only 280 meters per second maximum speed and you know there are uh, HE warheads as far as I can tell. Very good HE warheads for their size 8.1 inch but nonetheless versus potentially cruisers and their belt armor or later on even bigger ships, battle cruisers, battleships, they will have their limitations. However, in the future, just think about the everlasting power creep feature creep. We will see more guns, uh, more systems like this, but just better. Faster, harder hitting with more of them and fire forget, etc. This manually guiding in is satisfying and it's so beautiful when it works. But in the future, this will be the rule, not the exception. And this is where I'm getting really, really worried. And just think about what happened in tanks. Now, this is not a rant, but mark my words here. In the future, we will have the same situations that we already had with tanks. Think about when the IT-1 was introduced. Think about what that meant to heavy armor, just like the Jagdtiger, the Mouse, the 100 or the T-95 for the Americans. That caused some massive issues because suddenly um, the payoff wasn't worth it anymore. You know, the trade of speed for armor. Uh, previously, they were really famous for their armor. And these days, because of the power creep and the feature creep, 
they are more or less point pointless. Yes, it's nice when it happens, but again, that's the exception rather than the rule. Again, in the future, we will see more such systems, more guided missiles, maybe even fire and forget missile systems. Look what we have already with helicopters. Just imagine when we have bigger missiles, when we have faster missiles, when we have more missiles, when we have them on even more capable platforms, what that means for the introduction of battle cruisers and battleships. They're nothing but target practice for you. Somebody sitting behind an island and launching missile after missile while being safe in return. And those are all modern ships, so you cannot counter them even with aircraft, at least World War II based weaponry. And we all know how many uh, tanks that there are already in War Thunder that are fighting World War II tanks with stabilizers, APFSTS, um, you know, autoloaders, all those funny things. So I think that this missile system marks the beginning of the end of uh, naval gun based sea superiority. Something like the Admiral Graf Spee, which was the undisputed king of the waves of War Thunder a patch ago, due to the nerf to HE warheads in general, is now no longer a desirable ship, despite its uh, aesthetics. Now it's upon this ship to dominate the future of War Thunder. This is the start of a never-ending race of power creep, feature creep, and even more compression. Mark my words, I hope that I'm wrong. And as fun as this ship is, as cool as the missiles are, what can you do in your battleship? You spawn, and then somebody guides in a massive one-ton heat warhead directly to your belt. Angling is futile. Trying to turn away makes no sense. Your World War II based uh, anti-aircraft cannot really deal with missiles. Maybe the Iowa with some fancy upgrade radar system that you then have to unlock as a rank 4 module or something like this. Again, this ship is cool. It's expensive, 270,000 RP. 690,000 civil lines, 13,000 uh, civil line repair costs. It is deeply satisfying, it is really cool, I love to play it and I put a talisman on it. But just because the Cinieri and the Spaviero are not the best ships to grind with. And just look at the results. Now this is a win on a premium account with a talisman for one aircraft and eight kills. 12,600 RP, 73,000 civil lines for three epic awards. That's my first impressions on the Zeta P494. I hope you enjoyed. See you next time on the waves of War Thunder.